Hello and welcome to Upside Down. Today I want to give you 5 tips that will improve your art no matter of your skill level. If you're new to this channel, I'm making tutorials for 3D artists so that they can either start their career or improve their skills. Let's start! Tip number 1. Work on your shapes. As we are creating images and scenes that are bringing emotion to the viewer, we need to think about our shape language. Different shapes can trigger different emotions in the people that are viewing your scene. For example, I'll talk a little bit more about Disney and what they are doing when they are designing their characters. If the character that they are working on is an evil character, they are trying to use more strong shapes and shapes which are very sharp, this way they make him look a lot more dangerous and a lot more threatening to the viewer, while using more smooth shapes create somebody that is trustworthy and also more pleasing. This is something that can be applied to environments as well, as for example more spiky environment will tell the character that this place is dangerous. One more thing that you need to remember about shapes is that complex shapes are actually built up from simple shapes, so you should not be intimidated by them. It will be much easier if you just start with a block out with very simple shapes and little by little build up to a more complex and final form of your model. You need to understand what level of details are needed for your project. This is based, of course, a lot on the art style that you are working on. If you are doing something more stylized, you need to concentrate more on the bigger shapes and use smaller details just to enhance the overall form. Micro scratches are not as important as forms in this case and let's take Fortnite for example. While there are some details, the textures on the models are mostly supporting the overall shape of the model and adding some contrast on surfaces so that they don't look flat. If you are looking for realism in your scene, you need to be smart about where you are adding these details. This is something that you need to take into consideration while you are planning your scene. If you are working on a movie, most likely you already have a set camera that has some specific movement around the scene. In this case, you need to add details that give values to this shot and also think about the line language that these details are giving, as it's something which can draw the attention of the viewer to a certain place. If you are working on a game, then consider the type of camera that the game has. Is it a first person, third person or a top down? will determine where you need to concentrate your details. For example, adding very small details like scratches on a surface doesn't really bring a value if you are working on a top-down game where the camera is very very far away. One more thing that you need to take into consideration when working on games is your texture resolution. There is no reason of creating highly detailed models if at the end you are going to bake everything into small resolution textures. So this is something that you need to plan ahead and know what platforms you are working on and as well know what is the budget of your scene. One more thing about detailing your model is not to concentrate on just one area of detailing when you are working on it. Try to build up and iterate around the whole model and this way everything is going to be a lot more consistent and it will feel from the same universe. Tip number 3. Scale. Do a research before you are starting working on a model. For example, if you are working on a building, first try to find some metrics and some more information online about what are the sizes of different elements of this type of architecture. It's also very helpful to use a scale reference mannequin like for example the one from Unreal 4 as this will help you to see how a character feels in the space that you are creating. This is a very important step as it will help you with the proportions in your scene and as well it will make it a lot more believable. Scale is also something that can be used to exaggerate certain features of a model. For example if you are working on a cartoony scene you can scale up some of the elements to bring a little bit more cartoony feel or as well a little bit more goofy. The next two tips are going to be something which will improve your workflow and as well your productivity because we as 3d artists sometimes need to create very big scenes and we don't always have the time to do it so tip number four is going to be reusing your geometry when you're working on asset and you need to create more of the same visual style or different variations of the same asset try using symmetry or mirroring your geometry. Also you can try duplicating different elements and with few small modifications getting something which is from the same fashion but looks differently. This is a tip that can speed up a lot your workflow and make it a lot easier for you to create bigger scenes. Also try looking for elements which can very easily with very few steps be modified and look differently in a different scenarios around the scene. One good example are cables. It's something that you can create one or two variations of a very detailed model and if you're using spline workflow can be very easily modified to fit a certain shape around the scene. This way you can reuse the same model many many different times and add more detail levels and as well add more variety to the scene. And talking about modifying your objects like this brings me to my last tip. 
use adaptive workflow. What does this mean in software like 3ds Max, for example, is that you can keep your stack of modifiers on your model. And this way, whenever you want to go back a few steps, you can always do it without having to spend a lot of time reworking and redoing certain elements. This gives you the opportunity not only to very quickly adapt and create different variations of your models, but also it creates a non-destructive workflow. Having this non-destructive workflow is a very important part because when you are in a production, often it happens that you need to go back and change some things and you really don't want to start from scratch or lose a lot of time making those changes because it can happen again and again and again and this is just the nature of our work. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that these five tips that I gave you are going to be useful and are going to improve your work. Leave a like and comment down below and see you next time.